This is London. This is the BBC World Service from Broadcasting House in London. The world news at 0800 hours. The world is reeling this Christmas morning from the shocking news that last night an oil tanker, the SS Normandy, disappeared with all hands just off Cape Horn. The last recorded message from the tanker was received at around 3 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Now, as many listeners will know, the UN has an exclusion zone set up around Antarctica due to several prior disappearances, but the most recent reports indicate that the ship was far from the furthest reaches of this zone, and according to Lieutenant Commander Charlton of the Antarctic Exclusion Fleet, the Normandy was not intercepted or detected by any of the fleet. The Normandy's crew of 26 are still missing, presumed dead, following the incident. Among them were four British nationals, for whom condolences and eulogies are already being made. One, James Pratchett of Kingston-upon-Thames, had served in the Royal Navy for a number of years. Our thoughts go out to the families of the lost. In other news, the US presidential election race continues to steam ahead. Following primaries last year, Californian Senator Jesse Caldwell emerged victorious as Republican nominee and will be challenging Lyndon Baines Johnson, the current vice president, to President John F. Kennedy. The race has captured the minds of many in the United Nations, not just those in the US, and Prime Minister Bain has indicated that he will meet with both candidates to ascertain how their election will affect the future of Britain's relationship with the rest of the UN. Well, here now in the studio we have famed US political pundit Nicholas Franklin. Nicholas, a pleasure to have you here today. Well, pleasure's all mine. Now, Nicholas, with the rising cost of the Vietnam War for all of us in the UN, strong leadership is key, and with recent surveys in this country indicating that President Kennedy is facing some of the lowest public opinion polls to date, just how close do you think this race will be? Well, Alec, as you said, Kennedy is indeed facing a nightmare in office. The effort of pushing through the race reforms, the establishment of Medicare, and his increased spending across the board has brought him very few friends in the House of the Senate, and have outraged some of the larger corporations as well. But they are the election promises he made eight years ago, and he has indeed seen them enacted, as he promised, come hell or high water, so the Democrats still may hold some weight with the voters in the swing states that won them the elections the last two times. With that being said, do you think that Johnson is a strong enough man to handle Kennedy's legacy? Good question, Alec, and one that I doubt can be answered quickly. Kennedy has proven time and again that he is a skilled negotiator and a firm fighter. Remember how in 63 he didn't back down after the Bay of Pigs disaster? He kept our men fighting and reversed an almost certain defeat. During his leadership, Brazil, Argentina, and Libya have been accepted into the UN, and he has held the line on every other continent. Vietnam is still democratic, despite the best efforts of the pact and its allies, while in Angola, UN troops are keeping the Red Menace at bay as well. All in all, to say that Kennedy is a tough act to follow would be an understatement, but I personally believe that Johnson has what it takes. He has been Kennedy's right-hand man these last eight years, and I wouldn't be surprised if his muscle hasn't gotten a number of JFK's laws passed in an increasingly difficult Congress. So what about this challenger, Jesse Caldwell? Is he a serious threat to Johnson? To be frank, at this point, I'd say that a breeze would be a threat to Johnson, given how poorly people reacted to the increase of funding given to NASA last week. No, but in all seriousness, Jesse Caldwell is a bit of a mystery. He's practically an outsider. Barely anybody had heard of him three years ago. But now he's the darling of the military-industrial complex, and he's gotten the Republicans eating out of the palm of his hand. He's got serious financial backing from corporations galore, many of whom would be all too happy to see the back of both Kennedy and Johnson, and he is quite a charismatic figure himself. His popularity figures are incredible. Sounds like he was once quite the dark horse, then. Exactly. The fact that he defeated Richard Nixon for the nomination was a complete upset in the opinion of both myself and most of my colleagues, though granted it was a very close call. So we can expect another close-run race? Oh, for sure. The jostling for vice president will be worth every last second of discussion and analysis. And trust me when I say that this race will continue to be neck and neck. Nicholas, many thanks for joining us and look forward to hearing more of your analysis when the time comes. Thank you, and same to you. Our final news story this morning regards the upcoming Joint Strike Force funding bill that is being debated in the UN Congress in Geneva at present. While discussions are still ongoing, it appears that a previous stalemate between Representative Wren of France and Representative Fullerton of the United States regarding the accountability of the organization has finally broken, and that the bill will enter into effect in the new year as previously expected. That was the BBC News at 0800 hours. The next news update will be in an hour. 
In the meantime, we hope you enjoy Sports Review with Susan Jacobs. Good morning, and a very Merry Christmas to all of you.